Well, again, everybody, it's Plyboy, Plyboy's Ghost Channel. The other day, I had a, a buddy texting me back and forth off of uh, another channel, and we were talking about uh, revolvers and certain lengths and whatever, and he's kind of got into lately what I've got into lately. Well, of course, I've been, I've been liking some double actions and 44 specials and 44 magnums and stuff for a while, 45 coat forever, it seems like, but we were talking about... Uh, the John Taffin's Perfect Packing Pistols, uh, which is, if you haven't seen them, they're a, um, they're a, a bunch of articles that, that John Taffin uh, put together years ago, and you can still find them online, as far as I know, most all of them online. But in that, I believe they included auto pistols in it too, but I don't care too much at all about auto pistols, so I'm just gonna talk about revolvers. And when I say Perfect Packing Pistols and revolvers, for the, uh, for the new folks, they will say, well, a pistol and a revolver is two different things. Well, revolvers were called pistols long before there was ever an automatic pistol, so I'm still gonna refer to these as pistols too. If you disagree, that's fine, but you just have to bear with me or go watch something else. But in this, to the best of my recollection, the criteria was, I think it was bigger bore stuff, and I'm gonna say 40 caliber and bigger, 41 caliber and bigger, at least in my mind, that's what it is because there's, and, and there's also a, a barrel length uh, suggestion, four inch to five and a half inch. Now, one could argue that a three inch is, you know, just as deadly as a as a four inch, and and I would be right there with you on a lot of things. But the, see, part of the part of the purpose of this, as to my understanding, was that not only would these be guns that were packable, carryable, you know, for general purposes including self-defense which three inch revolver you know in some calibers can do great but they were also kind of a split duty thing for taking game should you have a chance at a shot at a buck or or whatever you know while you're off you know in the backwoods or out on the prairie or out in the mountains or wherever you're at and therefore i'm going to kind of hold to the four inch minimum simply because for me you know, I've not really tried to take 50 yard shots with a, a snub nose, and I'm sure there are people who can do it and do it great. And I'm sure those bullets still kill, you know, 41s, 44s, 45s, you know, still kill at that range without any issue. But I'm just going to limit this to four, four inch minimum to five and a half inch. But that's just my personal preference. And I left the Bulldog in the house for that reason. Although I would like to have a 44 special either in a, uh, a four inch ish, I believe that's what they make it in, GP 100, that'd be kind of cool. I'd like to have a Ruger Blackhawk in 44 special flat top, you know, built on the medium frame. I think that'd be awesome. But with what I have right now, this is where I'm taking it. And if you're in the single action realm, then, and I've checked every one of these guns They've been safety checked before I turn the camera on and they're all fully loaded and dangerous as hell. So I'm not gonna point them at myself. I will point them at you, but I'm gonna keep my finger off the trigger and not point at any person anywhere near me. So I think that the four and three quarter inch uh, single action army and clones thereof, and this of course is in 45 coat. Uh, that is to me, it's about a perfect packing gun. When it comes to a six gun, you got the right length there. Oh, quick, handy package. You can't hardly beat it. And now every load for 45 Colt, even the, even the weak cowboy loads can kill a deer. So, you know, the lethality is there and I don't carry no weak cowboy loads. I've, I've got actually in, in all of my single action 45 Colt clones, I've got the full 40 grain 3F 255 grain cast bullet load in it, which is more than enough hammer for any white tail that I'll ever see or you'll ever see. If you can hit it, you can kill it. My 8.2 grain universal load would do it too out of this gun. But right there is a good, easy, to me that gun's, that gun is, uh, even with six in it, got the hammer nose down between case rims, safely carrying six in that sucker. Not no chance in the world that thing going off. That right there is, it's, even with that, you know, it's not too heavy, especially once you get used to toting heavier guns. The five and a half inch, uh, single action army clone. That's another Cimarron, uh, that's that USB artillery model that I've had for a couple of years and I've still not shot that gun. I need to break down and shoot it. 
Loaded up 45 Colt, got the full black powder loading it. That right there would work just fine too. Of course, five and a half inch, four and three, well, if you had the four and five eighths, but the five and a half inch Blackhawk, either in, uh, this is in 45 Colt, but you could have it in, if you had the same barrel length in a Super Blackhawk and, you know, in 44 Magnum, or if you had the Blackhawk uh, flat top in 44 Special, four and three quarter, five and a half, if they make it in those, I'm not familiar with exactly the barrel lengths they make in that uh, flat top 44 special. If you had this and what I'm after right now, and I'm after one pretty hard, I want a, either a four and five eighths or a six, six and a half inch. I think I kind of want the four and five eighths. I want a Blackhawk in 41 Magnum and I don't want a three screw. I'm not a collector, I'm a shooter. I would prefer to have the new model just for, on my own reasons. Uh, of course, now in my single action army clones, I want them to be true coat clones as close as possible with the four clicks and, and all of everything that goes with that. But now in a Ruger, I don't mind a Ruger having a transfer transfer bar at all. But because to me, it's not a, it's not a cowboy frontier historic clone, whatever you want to label them. It is a utilitarian piece for me. You know, it's a hunter that kind of looks Western-ish from a distance level. Like I said, I want one in 41 Magnum pretty bad, but right now, and this is in 45 Colt, I have had nothing loaded in this gun, but, and I've shot nothing through it, but those, uh, the heavy 315 grain Lee gas checked over uh, 23 and a half grains of H110. And that is, that one will wear your hand out if you want to shoot a lot of them, just go right ahead. That's, after seeing what, after seeing what my Anaconda did, at 44 Magnum at six inch, after seeing what it did to the doe that I shot, how easily it zipped right through her, anchored her too now, she she was done. She died within 10, five, 10 yards of where I hit her. Uh, that was 21 grains over, of 2400 underneath that RCBS 250 grain Keith, which actually weighs about 260 grain. And no problem, no problem in the world. That load, went right through. The only thing you're doing, the only thing you're impressing is, the only thing you can gain, gauge as a gain over say the uh, 40 grain 3F load and 45 Colt or the 8.2 grain universal, which out of a five and a half inch gun probably will be close to 900 foot per second. The only thing you're gaining after that with a big cast bullet is how deep into a tree or how deep into the ground it goes, the bullet goes after it's went through your deer and you know started the final countdown for that deer. I believe wholeheartedly that the that the 44 special Keith, uh, not Keith load, but the 44 special Skeeter load, uh, 7.5 grain unique. I use Universal. It's pretty close under that Keith bullet. I believe that would do exactly to that doe what that full 44 Magnum did with that bullet with that doe too. So that opened my eyes to a few things. Now we get off into that that 315 grain load. That'll that at the speed that that's going through right now, according to some of the things I've read, like, see who wrote it? Uh, actually, it was John Limeball wrote this article I was reading. And this bullet weight at the velocity that this is running out of this gun, based on the, uh, excuse me, the chronograph results of using a very close load in, a, in almost the same gun, he said that it would go, it would pass through an elk like so much air. In other words, right on through it, through an elk, like it was nothing. So I have no doubt that probably end to end at 315 grain 45 coat load I got right there is all that I'd ever need, even for elk and bigger. So why would I spend the money to go bigger? Why would I go through the recoil to go bigger? Once again, you're just impressing the dirt and the tree on the other side of the target after you've done dealt the death blow to your deer. Back off into the double actions now. Got the uh, 4.2 inch Red Hawk and 44 Magnum. Uh, Y'all, this is the one that I, well, of course, it'll fit a four inch end frame Smith too. Got the uh, Diamond D uh, Outdoors, their uh, guide's choice leather chest holster chest rig for this. And I'm going to get, I, this This gun's gonna wear the wood grip panels, factory panels, just about all the time. But if I were to go trekking through the woods, long distance, whatever, 
I'd be tempted to slip a hogue on it, and I don't have the the bantam length hogue that they come out with new now, the, this barrel length does, but I'm gonna get one. I've got the full longer hogue that's just ugly as it can be, and it does handle okay, but I think I'm gonna try that. I ain't for 20 something dollars, I'm gonna order that hogue bantam rubber and just have it for, in case, you know, I get called out to Alaska. It, it, yeah, it, could, it probably won't ever happen. 44 Magnum, of course you could shoot 44 specials in this too, but Lord have mercy y'all, this is this is the weight, the the, the handling, the, the thickness, the strength for the full tilt, biggest 44 Magnum loads you could ever buy. Why would I wanna just shoot specials out of it? I get a lighter gun for specials. I got the Bulldog, but remember, I left the Bulldog 44 Special in the house because of the, th of the short barrel, it's a snub nose. And I'm kind of, trying to hold kind of pure to uh, John Taffin's ideas, you know, whatever he posted. Y'all, this has fast become one of my favorite calibers. One of my favorite. It's definitely in my top, It's in. it may be in my top two now. 45 Colt is still my favorite, but I may be starting to love 41 Magnum more than 44 Magnum. Got the four inch no dash uh, model 57 Smith & Wesson. Uh, put the, the uh, Altamont uh, bonded ivory grip zone, got the uh, grip adapter from BK Grip Adapters. And this gun is in excellent shape. I've got a bunch of different loads loaded up for that. That gun is actually pretty handy. Once you've tote something heavier for a little while, just like with a, with a Black Hawk, and once you tote something heavier for a little while, they start getting better. But if all you've done is tote around the Glock or the like, you're gonna hate probably everything here if you're trying to tote it. You'll be one of those, be like those kids who have really never done anything, shot much of anything other than Plastic Fantastics. And when they do a video, you know, they got all their tactical gear on and everything and they go and grab a, a revolver and 357 or, or 44. You, you probably won't ever see one of them with a 41. And all of a sudden this, you can see it. You can see just how uncomfortable they are. They can't, they don't know how to handle it. A lot of them will tell you incorrect things. Uh, You'll get channels who will uh, be so unfamiliar that they'll be one of the biggest critics of carrying a 44 Magnum or, you know, a, a, a powerful a double action revolver or single action revolver for that matter. They'll be one of the biggest, biggest critics and they'll push a weaker caliber automatic for, let's say, <clears throat> bear defense in Alaska constantly. And when you see them finally shoot something on camera, you can tell by the way they're handling that that revolver that they're not comfortable with it, that's not their cup of tea. And it's okay for people to have preferences. I'm not familiar with everything either, but don't, don't pretend to, they, they shouldn't pretend to be experts enough or experienced enough with both this and that to tell you that that is absolutely no good and this is the only thing you should want because they're just not familiar with the other. And that's all there is to it. And with this gun right here, 41 Magnum, I think is, is an awesome caliber, uh, properly loaded. It would be able to take anything on the North American continent, properly loaded. Uh, you get, they claim 25% less recoil. That'd be good because, you know, you shoot a whole lot of 44 Magnums out of a four inch gun and you're going to be wanting just a little little less recoil. If we're talking about full magnums now, we ain't talking about, you know, there's a lot of people try to download stuff, and I don't get that. But, you know, these uh, these 4-inch, 4.2-inch uh, double actions, I don't, they're awesome. I don't feel the same way about the 5.5-inch Red Hawk because the Red Hawk, the Red Hawk is a heavy gun. And in a five and a half inch, it just, you, it's heavy and it's bulky and it's thick. Like they say, it's built like a tank. Well, it weighs about as much and it's about as fast handling as a tank too. But it is still an awesome gun. It's an awesome hammer. I would actually like to have a Red Hawk in 45 Colt. I don't really care nothing about it being chambered in 45 ACP convertible because I'll never... If I buy one of those guns, I will never put the first 45 ACP in a revolver. That's just one thing I don't get is auto calibers and revolvers. But in that in that Red Hawk in 45 Colt, 
uh, Garrett cartridges loads and sells a, uh, a load for it that you can't use in anything else other than custom five shot, uh, probably Ruger based, uh, you know, uh, custom guns. Uh, it's a 405 grain bullet in this 44 Magnum load. No, 45 Colt load, excuse me. They call it 405 RHO, Red Hawk only. And it is, even out of a revolver, that load is a 405 grain bullet going fast enough that you end up getting the ballistics out of a uh, revolver. I can't remember what length it is. If it's five and a half, if it's seven and a half or what. It may be out of a shorter one. I can't recall. You end up with the ballistics equal to the original Springfield trapdoor Springfield carbine load. That's that's a pretty big hammer out of a revolver. That would be awesome. Anyway, I feel like I lost my train of thought trying to explain something to y'all. I got sidetracked, but um, I have uh, I've been reading John Taff and stuff for a while when I come across it. And I go through spells where I won't what, read it for a while. I won't pay much attention for a while. But right now, this is where I'm at. Strictly in a, in a, uh, and you know, and I'll put on different hat and different clothes and different boots and want to carry the coat clones and, and get in that frame of mind for a little while. And then there's times that, in, in, there's times that I want to double actions and I'm thinking more along the lines of, you know, yeah, I'd like to go to Idaho, Montana, Alaska. I'd like to hunt this, that, and the other, you know, and be off in the back country like I'm in shape enough for the back country. Y'all, I am not. And then I'll tote these for a while, you know, this hat, whatever else, this shirt. And then there's times that that Blackhawk almost bridges the gap between them because you've got the power of the full Magnums and that full size large frame 45 coat Blackhawk and that large frame Ruger. And like I said, you still got something that kind of looks Western esque, Western ish from a distance. So that's where my head's at. This is how I don't get bored, burn out, sell everything, go buy a motorcycle. I, I just get in different moods for different things, different guns, and and go with it. And if I'm smart, if I play my cards right, then when I get when my mood changes, my tastes change. I don't have to go sell something or trade something because I've traded out of that type of gun when that you know like that mood was never going to come back around. I just put up what I'm toting and go in there and grab something else. And I don't have many, but I sure I'm glad that I have what I do. Y'all, if you don't see another video from me, and you probably will because I've got other ideas too, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I, uh, if you don't talk to me before then, but you're probably going to. But I'll go ahead and say it now. We'll get an extra one in there, and maybe it'll be double, doubly merry for all of us. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to y'all later.